welcome back or welcome if this is your first time. My name is Zafania or Zephy for short. This is episode two, take two. I already recorded it with a different lens but when I went to edit it, it was all, you could hear the focusing sound of the lens. This one is the one I used in the first episode so it should be fine. Um, I think we'll start with what I'm wearing. I'm, this is my finished 1939-ish dress. It's made out of a really beautiful rayon crepe that I got from the fabric store online. They have really nice crepes or rayon crepes. They're like nice and lightweight. They're not super thick or anything. Yeah, I'll just I'll stand up. Can't really see in this light, but it's supposed to have a belt, which I did make one, but I don't. I think the buckle is too small, so I have to do. And I didn't make it big enough, so it's a bit, a bit skinny. And I just. But yeah, I think it's a little bit too small. Like the buckle is too small and the strap is too small. Um, what else? So I have a half finished object. This is my sock. So I finished the first one. So I've started the second one and this time I didn't cast on for the bigger size like I did with this one. Like you can see where I decided to decrease because it was too big. I think for this pattern I might do the ribbing in a bigger needle size because this just fits over my foot. And I think it's the 62-ish size. So yeah, I just think if I do the ribbing in a like 2.25 or a 2.5, then it will just give me that little bit of extra to get over my foot. I can get it on, but it's just a little bit tight and annoying. It's one of the things that I don't like about knitting my own socks because they tend to you have to wiggle them on even when you do a stretchy cast on. So I think if I just have a bigger needle size in the beginning, then it will be much easier. But yeah, this is the definitely the episode of half finished objects because I also finished the other panel of my skirt. So we've got one. And then here is number two. So I cast on the top and I've actually worked on it quite a bit since there's been a bit of time between the last time I recorded and this time. So this I've cast on is super, super punched up. It's supposed I haven't counted, but the pattern says that there's 335 stitches and my needle is obviously not long enough. So I need to get around to counting before I knit a whole heap, but I'm not too worried if there's a couple of more or a couple of less. I just have to make sure that the mat, the front fits in with the back. So yeah, it's this one. And I'm super excited. I'm like, yeah, only one more, <laughs> only one more to go. It'll be done by winter, I guess. And then the other half finished object is I finished the back panel of my partner's jumper. So here it is. Oh, it's glory. It's like a, it's like a dress for me. And um. Yeah, I've started the other one. 
I don't think I brought it. Be right back. So I've done quite a bit on this as well. So yeah, when I was looking at it, I was like, it looks a bit small, but I guess it does stretch a lot too. And it was kind of in between sizes anyway. But yeah, really, I really enjoy knitting on this one. I really like the cables. I think for the sleeves I am definitely going to have to cast them on both at the same time just because I want them to be exactly the same and I'm prone to not getting them exactly the same and then yeah we've got this one which I've worked on a bit since the first episode but I haven't worked on it much since then oops dropping a stitch But yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy with the colours I picked out. I think they go really well together. And I really like this blue. It's such a nice blue. I really want to do like an all over colour work patterned kind of like Norwegian style cardigan or something with this blue and the grey. I think it would look... I think it would look really nice together in my own jumper, but I haven't, that's a future plan if I've ever heard one. And then I haven't really worked on much for my mum's cardigan. She'd actually end up visiting me because she had to pick up a combi van that she bought so she finally managed to get up here but yeah I've just started doing the increases for the front and I did I did it's it's not the easiest way but I did try it on and see and I was pretty happy with the sizing so far so I really I really need to work on this but I don't know, there's something about it that I'm just more interested in my other projects and maybe mum will have it by next summer since it's a cotton. It's one of the reasons why I don't like saying I'll knit stuff for people because then I have to actually do it and they want it because they're excited and then it takes forever to do and then they yeah, don't want to disappoint anyone. Actually, whenever I'm watching podcasts and people take a sip of tea, the camera, the mic sometimes pick it up and I'm one of those people who hate swallowing noises so it drives me crazy. So I'll try and cut that out. But if not, I apologise to anyone in the audience that doesn't like swallowing sounds because I feel you. Um, so we had a mini lockdown here in Melbourne again, which was sad. But before that happened, I went to the up shop. I was looking for some curling things they call hot sticks and I remembered seeing a set but then I didn't buy it and then I went back and I hoped it was still there but it wasn't but every time I go to an op shop I always look in the books in the patterns in the yarn and all the crafting stuff because there's, they might have some vintage patterns or vintage pattern books or something like that like I've gotten a couple of knitting books from the 40s and 50s simply by looking through all of the patterns but I was looking through the books and I found this older book of Alistair Moore's called Celtic 
collection. So we'll get it to focus on me. This is not the best place. Um, I was really surprised because it's it's not common to find things from like older things from overseas here. I feel like we in terms of vintage we have a lot less than other countries and um, yeah it's just harder to find but I really was excited and I do have a couple of patterns in here I was like these are cool I'll knit them I mean there are some that I wouldn't knit because they're a bit a bit colourful for me but I um, thought it was really cool and I wanted some of stuff some of her older work is really interesting and maybe one day she might redo them and re, re republish them but yeah this one is one I really like so it's called when is it called Abba Lady Celtic key sweater and the pattern looks like it's done with sorry the pattern looks like it's done with pearl bumps so it looks like it's cabled but it's not it's just a pattern done with pearl bumps which I thought was really cool really cool and there are a couple of cable designs in here that I really like I think I took some photos with my phone so I'll go out oh. Maybe I'll record a flip through. But yeah, I really like this one. Can't really see it. It's got an interesting design as well. So yeah, I was really happy to find this. It was a very exciting find. Um, okay. So I was. When I was re-watching my first episode, I was going as looking at my make nine and I realized that I don't have I don't have any cardigans, which might be a mistake. I definitely need some. I don't have that many. Um, so I was looking through my vintage pattern collection and I found this one. And I thought that this would be a good one to knit. It looks pretty simple. Let's see if I can get it up in the camera. No. Let's, let me stand in front of the light. But yeah, that's the cardigan style. I mean, I'll probably just do it in a boring black. So I can wear it with everything. Maybe like a burgundy or like a blue black. But yeah. I don't know about anyone else, but sometimes I just like to go through my pattern collection and just just look at the patterns. Like I've always really wanted to knit this one. It's a little cabled jumper top. This is not the greatest spot to record at this time of day. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. But yeah, I've always really wanted to knit this one. So I think I might make a purchase soon from Bendigo Woolen Mills. They have a really affordable four ply and things. So. Yeah. Um, what else? I've really been enjoying other people's podcasts, so I, of course, really love fruit and knitting. And um, if you haven't watched, any of their stuff I definitely recommend it but I'm sure everyone's watched it they're very popular and for good reason and I love that they're Australian even though they live in Germany 
it's so nice to hear their voices and yeah um, I've also been enjoying Knitting Traditions she's a newer podcast which I'm, I'm sure there's going to be people who are watching this that have watched her and Merryweather she's I re really enjoy watching her podcast as well and yeah I think it's just nice to sit and knit with people as they're talking about their interests I don't think I really have anything interesting <laughs> to talk about but yeah so my mum visited which was nice and then I was going to go get a haircut but there was a small problem with that thing it's happening in the world and we got locked down again which I'm sure most people can understand how annoying it is I feel like anytime I make plans for anything we get locked down and I'm like please but yeah I was really excited to get my hair cut because I have been enjoying putting curls in it more but it's a bit too long for proper vintage styles especially with my my hair is very straight and it does not like to take a curl even an overnight curl still struggles so yeah, I need a bit, a little bit chopped off and I mean, I wish I could have longer hair and it'd be fine, but sometimes it's just not the case. But yeah, when my hair is curled, this is probably how I wear it the most. And these pretty hair flowers are by Pinup Curl on Instagram. I got these custom done and they're just so pretty. I really like hair flowers, I just think, especially when my hair's not done in curls. It's nice to put something pretty and cute in there. Um, I finished a skirt during the little mini stay at home. It's a 1970s skirt I made out of linen. I'm not really very happy with it. I think it'll grow on me though. I need to redo the pockets there. Two patch pockets and they're like this. <laughs> because the pattern said to sew them on before you put the skirt together. Which I think if I was to sew this pattern again, I would do it as the last step because it's, I think it depends on how you, how your body is as well. And I think I mean they looked straight when I put when the skirt was flat and I put them on but something must have happened probably my hips happened um, I bought some more of the crepe of this from the fabric store and I'm really excited to sew some new things. Go get it. Not that you'll be able to see it because this light is funny. So I got two different pinks. There's this darker pink, which I think really suits me. This would be a good screenshot. And then I got this lighter pink, which is similar color to the skirt. And the skirt I knit in a linen. The fabric store, a lot of their different fabrics, you can kind of get similar colors in. So I think one is called blush and the, I'll link it down below. But if you're in Australia and you're looking for a nice place that has a lot of colours in like linen and rayon and um, jerseys then they're really great for that and then I they didn't have a lot of this one so I'll probably only end up making a top 
it's this nice burgundy red colour which I think suits me as well and then yeah so I got these pinks because I really like a lot of vintage dresses that are out of budget or already owned or are not the right size so there's this Instagram, she's also on YouTube called Ida Kath, her whole name's Ida Catherine I believe and she has the most delightful vintage-esque style and I just, I just love it but yeah there's a couple of, I guess they're, they're from, they're all in Europe so I guess Swedish or Danish or something, I forget but they all have basically the kind of vintage that I, I really like. And then there's Steffi in the US. She does a lot of really pretty 30s. But yeah, I decided to get these two pinks. You can see that they're different. Because I really want to sew myself one of the dresses or a copy or something inspired by the dresses that I really like so I think this like these crepes are this the same so I really think it'll work well I like really like this one I'm not going to knit this pattern I don't I mean sew this pattern and this one mostly because the sleeves I think I need to fiddle around with them. I prefer something that was a little bit poofier I guess. I don't know. But yeah, I'm really excited. And this one I'll probably, yeah, make a little blouse. I don't think I have enough for a skirt, but I just really like this colour, so yeah. To anyone who's watching also so from vintage patterns I actually really like them they definitely need a knowledge of sewing I would recommend that if you're going to sew from a vintage pattern to have a sewing book from that time period or anything 60s down so if you so a lot of the techniques will still be the same. I have a Singer sewing book from like 1963-ish and it still has a lot of descriptions of the same kind of techniques that you would use in a vintage dress. Another thing that also ha helps is to just have a vintage dress because you can have a look and actually see how they were sewn in the time period and I, I think that really helps. I'm kind of a problem solver who likes to have the finished thing and then kind of like reverse engineer it. Like I feel like I need to see the finished project product before I can understand it properly. So yeah, that's my plans for this. I might actually make a video on sewing up all this stuff or maybe I might do a video on what my plans are for my wardrobe are I am I don't know if I found a pattern for any of this stuff that I like but I might actually try to draft something from the Haslam drafting system so it's a drafting system that had a whole heap of really cool designs in it and I just find that I'm a bit it would be better for me to have something drafted to my measurements because I'm shorter and curvy and some like with the skirt sometimes it just doesn't work but yeah other fabric that I have received recently is some denim I really want to make the Persephone trousers link them down below as well but they're like a sailor trouser that's been really popular to sew but I definitely need to make a mock-up of them because I find trousers always very tight in the thigh for me 
and then loosen the waist and yeah so but yeah it's like a railroad denim I have two different types and when I was ironing it after I'd washed them I don't know if other people have it but when you're looking at a moving striped fabric and your eyes are like spazzing out and I was like I'm gonna make a lot of guys feel sick because I'll be looking at the tush and then the stripes will and then I'll feel sick. It's going to be fun. But yeah, does anyone have any vintage things that they really liked, would like to copy? I mean, I know it's the copying dresses is very popular in the like, historical costuming, which I do have plans to eventually sew something. It was my goal for last year, but I'm sure like a lot of people, we did not accomplish the things we wanted to. I had a really terrible time trying to move, so did not, did not get that done. But yeah, I'm thinking of doing maybe some sewing vlogs in the future especially because I don't consider myself an expert and I thought it would be nice for someone to see the process of making like someone's first attempt at making like a historical costume because I've never done one before and I know there are probably a lot of people out there who want to make it but are intimidated or scared of like failing and or ruining the fabric but yeah I still need to make a corset which I might I don't know I cut out this one pattern but it has gauze and I've sewn it before and I didn't work so I think I might do a different pattern or I might just cut one because sometimes you just have to buy things and it's a lot easier and things happen a lot quicker. But yeah. I think that's all I have to say today. Oh, what have we got? I've got 29 minutes, 30 minutes basically. I just cut out. I just wanted to say bye and if you liked listening to me chat about vintage things and vintage knitting and other knitting, I do enjoy knitting from modern patterns as well, give me a like and comment down below and things like that and thanks for watching.